In this video, we're going to be building out a home lab server. We're gonna be putting together this Intel NUC. We're gonna download and install VMware ESXi server. And by the end of the video, we'll be installing and booting up our very first virtual machine. So we'll go over the parts that we're using today. I'm gonna to go ahead and throw up a little bit of a parts list on the side here. Now this particular Intel NUC is an 11th gen Core i7. I've got two 32 gig sticks of RAM here. And then I also have this M2 one terabyte SSD that we'll be throwing in as well. These Intel NUCs are pretty awesome. We've got a couple of HDMI ports on here. We've got a couple of USB-C ports on there, a couple of USB type A on the back, a 2.5 gig ethernet. We also have a couple of USB ports on the front. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and install the components into the Intel NUC. We'll just flip it over and really it's just four screws. This is where the NVMe is going to go, and then we have the two slots for the RAM there. And then we'll install the RAM here. Over here, there's a little bit of an engraving there that says front. Okay, so that's all built up, ready to go. We can go ahead and install the software on there now. So the next step is we're going to be creating a USB bootable thumb drive with ESXi hypervisor on there. We actually have to create a little bit of a custom one because that particular Intel NUC does require a different network driver on there, but that's okay. I've got some instructions for you. These instructions are current as of now. I'll put them in a link down below with a bit of a write-up on that. If anything changes, I'll try to keep that article updated that I've linked down below. But for now, these are gonna be the instructions that I'll walk you through. First of all, we need to go ahead and find the page to download the VMware ESXi. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. You have to create an account on here in order to go and download. So you'll actually see here that there is an ISO image and there's an offline bundle. So you actually want the offline bundle in order to do this. I'll also note that it provides you with a license key for the hypervisor. So when you initially load the hypervisor, it's gonna say it's on a time limited trial. And then this license key, it's free. This license key will allow you to go ahead and unlock that. And then the instructions that I used for creating the custom image is on this page here. So I'm linking that down in the article that I'm providing down below. Uh, my particular Intel NUC is listed on here as one that is needing this network driver. We have the download link for that network driver on here. And then we have the instructions to use to build that image. Now there's a couple nuances with this. This requires PowerShell and this requires a version of PowerShell that is older than version six. I happen to have a VM available to me that has PowerShell in version five. And then I've had to update that with a couple uh, specific plugins for VMware. So you wanna install the vmware.powercli plugin and the vmware.imagebuilder plugin as well. After that, you're gonna take the offline bundle and you're gonna take the community driver and you're gonna run through these commands and that is going to help you create that image. So now you have a new ISO image that you can use with that driver available on there. So I'm on a Mac and so there's some specific instructions for creating that bootable USB drive and I'm gonna put a link to the article within the article that I'm creating but I'm following a blog article from virtuallywired.io. It's got some instructions here. We're gonna use the disk util command. We're gonna use that on the USB drive that we've inserted. We're gonna go ahead and format that drive and then we actually have to do an unmount but not actually remove it from the computer. And then we're gonna do an fdisk command in order to make that bootable. And then from there, there's some instructions on mounting the ISO that we created before, opening up the USB flash drive, copying the files over. You have to rename the file isolinux.cfg into syslinux.cfg, open that up. And you're gonna add a little bit of a parameter to the append command on there and then that's ready to go. You can eject that and we'll go ahead and pop that in to the Intel NUC and we can boot up and do the install from there. 
Okay, so we're just booting up the NUC now. I'm gonna go through the installer. Okay, from here, we'll go ahead and hit enter and we can go ahead and accept the EULA. Now it's looking for the drive. So if everything was installed correctly, yep, there it is. So we see our NVMe drive. I will go ahead and select that and we will select the US default keyboard and we will go ahead and enter in a password for the root account. So we'll go ahead and accept that. So we'll hit F11. Okay, so the install has gone through okay. It says that uh, it's completed successfully. That means that the network driver that we loaded on uh, accepted okay. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the USB thumb drive. We'll hit enter to reboot and we should boot up into fully installed ESX server. Okay, so it looks like it came back up. Um, right now it's got an IP address that it got off of my DHCP server. So I wanna change that. So we're gonna hit F2, we're gonna log in and we're gonna change that to a static IP address on the network. So go ahead, type in the root account uh, password that we set before. And from here, we're gonna go to change management network. We're gonna go down to the IPv4 configuration change that to static IPv4 address, and then we are going to change that address there. So that's one I've got set aside on my network. I can hit okay from there, uh, go ahead and exit out of this, and I can hit yes for apply the network changes, and I'll hit escape to log out of here. Okay, so it's got the new management address reflected on the screen there. Okay, so from here, we'll pull up a browser and we'll type in that IP address to go ahead and log into the ESX server. Now it's running a self-signed certificate so we can get past that screen and I'll log in with the root account here, root and the password that we set up. And I'll just accept this here. Okay, so you'll see that the license says it's going to expire in 60 days. So we're gonna go to the host, we'll hit manage, go under licensing. And from here, I can hit assign license and to go back, get that license key that we grabbed off of the VMware download page, and we need to paste that into here. So there's no virtual machines loaded at this point. If I go under storage, I see one data store on there. That is the data store that is made up of the NVMe that I have loaded onto the NUC already. I'll go into that and I'll go under data store browser, and I want to create a little folder for all my ISO images. So I'll go ahead and do that at this point. And in there, I'm going to go ahead and just upload an ISO for uh, Ubuntu server. That's what we'll use for just testing out today. So that's going to take a minute to load. Okay, so with that loaded up, we'll head over to the virtual machines. I'm going to go ahead and create a virtual machine, create new virtual machine. I'm just going to name this Linux one. And then under operating system, we'll switch that to Linux. And I'm going to go ahead and select a Ubuntu Linux 64 bit from here. Hit next. I'm just going to go ahead with that one data store that I have. And I'm just going to leave these as defaults, but I do want to change the disk drive. I'm going to switch that to the data store ISO. And I'm going to go ahead and find that Ubuntu ISO that I'd loaded on before. And we'll hit next and finish. And there it is. So it's created the VM at this point. I'm gonna go ahead, go into that VM and we'll flip it on. And I'll just click on that screen there. And it is loading up Ubuntu at this point. So at this point, just go through a regular Ubuntu install. It's gonna act like it's on a regular machine at this point. Okay, and there we are. We're at a login screen for Ubuntu. All right, you can do whatever you want with your lab at this point. I'm gonna be building out a customer edge for F5's edge computing platform. So you wanna check out those videos at youtube.com slash devcentral and subscribe to there as I upload them.
Also, the whole write-up for this build is going to be at community.f5.com as well, which is free to create an account, and you can connect with me on there. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you on the next one.